When tightening a bolt using a spanner, we usually apply a perpendicular force at the far end of the handle. As a result, the spanner rotates around the center of the bolt which acts as a pivot point, turning the bolt along with it. This rotational tendency exerted to the bolt is called a moment, or sometimes referred to as torque. We can define moment as the tendency of a force to rotate an object about a pivot point. Moment depends on two factors, the magnitude of the force and the perpendicular distance from the pivot point to the line of action of the force, which is called the moment arm. Moment is directly proportional to the force on the moment arm, given by the formula m is equal to f times d, where m is equal to moment, f is equal to force, and D is equal to moment arm. For example, let us say that the force exerted to the spanner is 80 newtons and the moment arm is 0.2 meters. We can directly substitute the given values to the formula M is equal to F times D. So M is equal to 80 newtons times 0.2 meters. Therefore, the moment exerted to the bolt is 16 newton meters. It is very important that the moment arm is measured perpendicular to the line of action of the force. For instance, let's say that the same force 80 newtons is now applied to the spanner at an angle of 20 degrees from the vertical. The moment arm will not be 0.2 meters anymore. Rather, it will be the distance from the pivot point perpendicular to the force's line of action. And to solve for the moment arm D, we can use this right triangle. We know that this angle is 90 degrees, so this angle must be 90 minus 20, which is equal to 70 degrees. Using the sine function, sine of 70 degrees is equal to d divided by 0.2 meters. Solving for d, and we get 0.188 meters. Now that we have the moment arm, we can calculate the moment using the formula m is equal to f times d. Substituting the values, m will be equal to 80 newtons times 0.188 meters. This gives us the moment of approximately 15.04 newton meters. Let's look at another example. Here we have a column that's 2 meters tall with 0.8 meter cantilever at the top. At the free end, there is a 10 kilonewton force acting at an angle of 20 degrees from the vertical. We need to solve for the moment at point A. First, we need to solve for the moment arm of the force. Again, it will be the distance from the pivot point which is at point A and perpendicular to the line of action of the force. Let's call it D. Then, I will draw a line here to complete a right triangle ACD. We will use this right triangle to calculate for the moment arm D. Let's call this line L and this angle theta. If we can solve for L and theta, we can use the cosine function to solve for the moment arm D. I will draw a vertical line from the point of application of the force to form this right triangle. We know that the acute angles of a right triangle are complementary angles. So this angle must be 90 minus 20 degrees or equal to 70 degrees. And this vertical opposite angle is also 70 degrees. Now let's take a look at this second right triangle. Since one of its angles is 70 degrees, the remaining acute angle must be 90 minus 70, which gives us 20 degrees. Next, let's solve for the angle beta. From this right triangle ABC, we can use the tangent function since we know the lengths of the opposite and the adjacent sides of the angle beta. So tangent beta is equal to 0 0.8 divided by 2 meters. And solving for beta, we get 21.8 degrees. We can now solve for the angle theta. That will be theta is equal to 90 degrees minus beta minus 20 degrees, which is equal to 48.2 degrees. Next, let's solve for the length of L, which is the hypotenuse of this right triangle ABC. Using the Pythagorean theorem, L is equal to the square root of 0 0.8 squared plus 2 squared which is equal to 2.154 meters. Finally, using the cosine function with the right triangle ACD, the cosine of 48.2 degrees is equal to D 
over the hypotenuse 2.154 meters. Solving for D, we get 1.436 meters. We can now substitute the force and distance to the formula for moment. So M is equals to 10 kN times 1.436 meters, which is equal to 14.36 kN meters. But there's actually a better and much simpler way to find the moment at point A by using the Varignon's theorem. Varignon's theorem states that the moment of a force about a point is equal to the sum of the moments of its components about the same point. So let's say we have a diagonal force that passes through the point HK and we need to find the moment at point O. Instead of calculating for the moment arm, and then using the formula m is equals to f times d, we can simplify the process by breaking the force into its horizontal and vertical components. Then, we can calculate for the moment of each component about point O. And the total moment mO will simply be the sum of these individual moments. Take note, just like when adding forces, we need to consider not only the magnitude but also the direction of the moments. But unlike forces which act along straight lines, moments depend on the direction of rotation, either clockwise or counterclockwise. By convention, we often take counterclockwise moments as positive and clockwise moments as negative. However, this isn't always necessary. As long as we stay consistent with the convention throughout our calculation, the result will be correct. Now let's go back to our example. Applying Varignon's theorem, let's split the given force into horizontal and vertical components. Let's call the horizontal component Fx and the vertical component Fy. Then, the moment at point A is equal to the sum of the moments caused by these components. For this example, let's take clockwise as positive. The vertical component Fy is equal to 10 times cosine 20 degrees with the moment arm of 0.8 meters. It creates a clockwise moment at point A. So we will add it to our formula as positive. The horizontal component Fx is equal to 10 times sine 20 degrees, also creates a clockwise moment with a moment arm of 2 meters. So it will also be positive. And solving for Ma, the moment about point A is equal to 14.36 kN meters, and the direction will be clockwise since it is positive. This matches our earlier result using the direct force times d approach, confirming Varignon's theorem. And that's it for now. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.